Let's talk about what it is that the examiner is looking for you or looking for from you here. The more that you understand um, the exam technique and the exam design behind it, the easier it is for you to get marks. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. What is the examiner looking for? I said already the examiner is looking for an understanding of whether or not you know how general ledger accounts work. Okay, so it's not just you know, can you copy and paste and do parrot fashion, um, you know, exactly the same stuff all the time? They go, do you know how it works? Do you know that a general ledger will start with opening balances, has movements? The movements, some of the movements are totals from your basic sales journals and, you know, cash receipts journals and cash payments journals that are normally done and added up and totaled and posted every month. And then there's always these weird little adjustments that happen as well. So, do you understand how general ledger accounts are created? Do you understand how to manipulate them and move them? In other words, you know, as we said, if there's a, if I give you a balance, can you create the movement from that? Can you figure out the move, you know, the the the, the balancing figures, etc. So, do you understand how general ledger accounts work? Do you understand and can you work with a type of info if it's given in a slightly different way? So what a lot of students do, obviously, when they study this, this subject is they start off and they go, um, okay, so, you know, the cash receipts journal, this is what a cash receipts journal looks like. You know, you've got the day and you've got the, you know, the, the, the document number and you've got the details and you've got the column, you know, so, so students are used to, you, you know, doing the entire thing, the whole cash receipts journal, and then going, okay, so what you do then is you take this total, and you take this total here, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's what students are used to doing. And what this examiner, what the examiner is looking for is saying, if I give you the same information, but I give it to you in a slightly different format, do you still know what you're looking for? Or, um, you know, do you only know what to do with the bank column in the CRJ? Do you only know what to do with it if it looks like this? Okay. Are you aware of the fact that the column, you know, the, the, the column that goes there, do you know what that means? So, you know, in your CRJ, you've got the trade receivables column, you know, that would be the amount there. Do you know what that looks like? So the trade receivables column, you know, um, cash receipts journal, the trade receivables column, the 207420 would be in here, 207420. So the students in a lot of cases are used to seeing it this way and go, oh, I know what to do with this. I know what to do with it when it looks like that. But now you're giving it to me and it looks different and I don't know what to do with it now. Okay. So they're looking and they're saying, do you really know what type of information you are studying? Do you know what it means? Do you know where it goes? Do you know how it looks? And just because it doesn't look exactly the same, are you still able to deal with it? Okay. So can you interpret and go, that's what it looks like, but that's the same information. This is the same information. Okay. So that's one of the things they want to know. Do you understand how to work with the information? Do you know what to do with the balances? In a lot of cases, do you know your debits and your credits? Okay. Can you actually identify from the type of information, the settlement discount granted, um, I'm going to give you the amount, do you know whether that's a debit or credit? So they're wanting to know, do you understand whether this increases or decreases the asset, does it increase the thing, how do you deal with it, you know, what, what, what is it that you actually do? And then the additional information is a whole bunch of situational stuff where they say, if something weird happens, do you know what to do with it? And you can see in some of the cases, it's a case of um, it's a strange transaction. It's something that doesn't happen very often. So, um, uh, you know, generally you have stuff that happens infrequently is stuff that will pitch up here, you know, uh, the account being written off is something that doesn't happen very often. So it's not something that comes up a lot. So it's not done, you know, in, in, in all the other journals. Um, charging interest is another one. It doesn't happen very often. So what do you do with it? Uh, or there's errors. And in that case, like we looked at that, the sales invoice was entered twice. How do you fix that? 
uh, you know, do you need to fix it? Has it been sent to the ledger and to the general, you know, the debtor's ledger and the general ledger and the sales journal? How does that work? So understanding the flow of information is really, really important because you need to understand how do I fix that if, um, you know, I need to know what was done so that I know how to fix it. Okay, so errors, things that haven't, you know, how do you fix that? How do you correct the stuff? Things that don't happen very often. This is what they're trying to test you. Now, the other thing I want you to be aware of is that some of these issues and some of these things are higher grade, okay? And I want you to be aware of this because what students will do is they'll look at stuff that's higher grade and they'll spend too much time on it. You only have 23 minutes to get 19 marks, okay? So some of the stuff, like what to do with the trade receivables column in the cash receipts journal, you know, the fact that that needs to go to, you know, to, to go to your, the credit of your journal, of your ledger, that's not that complicated. So that's like normal, you know, a normal kind of item. That's not hard. That's fine, whatever. So we expect that you're able to do that. But then they'll put in this weird stuff. Like they'll put in weird stuff sometimes and you're kind of sitting there going, I'm not sure what to do with that. So the bad debt, you know, number one, Bad debt, not so much of a worry. Don't worry too much about it. Oh, we've done that. We've seen that before. That's fine. Then we get to number three, for example. And you go, okay, now this is starting to get a little bit weird. A sales invoice was entered twice in the sales journal, posted twice to the personal account of, of the debtor. So they're kind of saying, if something's gone wrong and this is slightly weird, this is a little higher grade because now you really have to unpack it and go, um, you know, like, do I do I fix it or don't it? And this is a slightly higher grade issue. I want you to be aware of the fact that if you come across stuff like this in the exam, I want you to spend no more than two minutes on it. Okay, no more than two minutes, like maximum, maximum, maximum. And then I want you to ignore it and move on. Because here's what happens. Okay, so by the time you get here, you've only got 23 minutes. Chances are, by the time you get here, at least 15 minutes has already passed. And now you're only starting, you know, now you're only starting this stuff. If you get to point number three here, okay, and you spend two minutes on item number one and two minutes on item number two, you're now sitting on 19 minutes, for example. And now you go, okay, point number three, uh, oh, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with it. And you figure it out and you play with it and you're like, do I do this? Do I do that? You agonize over it. Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? And the minutes are passing. One minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. You don't want to let it go because you're like, but I have to. I have to. I have to figure it out. I have to figure it out. I have to figure it out. And eventually you're not going to get the mark anyway because chances are what you're going to do with it is going to be wrong because you don't actually know what you're doing. But you've wasted five minutes trying to figure it out. That means that your time's up on the question, right? Because now 19, you've spent five minutes on this, which means you're now sitting at 24 minutes. So your time's up. And you don't get to anything else. You know, all the marks that were on offer from point four to, to eight you're not getting it all. You didn't even give yourself a chance to do that because you spent too much time on that for something that you can't do anyway. You know, you're not actually able to do that. You don't know what you're doing. So what you need to make sure that you do is you look at something and assess whether or not you're capable of doing it. Never give it more than two minutes maximum and then go, um, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to pick something. I'm just going to do something with it. If you kind of go, well, uh, you know, I know that it should be in the general ledger, but I'm not sure if it's a debit or a credit. Pick one. I know it sounds terrible. Okay, I know you don't like the idea, but you pick it, commit to it, and you move on. You know, if the difference is between a debit or a credit, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting it right or wrong anyway. Put it in and move on. Why? It's not so much because I'm interested in whether or not you got that item right. My concern is that you lost all the marks for everything else that came after that because you never got to it at all. So there's a good possibility that there's a good other six marks in here that you never even got to at all because you were busy agonizing over whether or not the thing was a debit or a credit or whether or not you should put it in or not put it in or whatever the case is. And, and so, so now what? What do you do now? 
It's a complete waste of time, right? You, I need you to be focusing on the fact that time equals marks. Time equals marks. And there's going to be stuff in that question that you look at and go, I don't know what to do with that. If that's the case, I need you to understand that I'd rather you spend your time on stuff that you can get marks for. So you go, I'm going to leave number four and I'm going to go straight to number five. You know, um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to leave it out. In this case, you know, if you left one of these items off, for example, if you left one of these transactions off, it is going to change the balance here okay that is going to change that but at least you'd still be getting the marks for everything around you the fact that you didn't get that right doesn't change the fact that the other stuff is right and your errors are marked through okay that means that very important that means that you may have left that out because you don't know what you're doing and you got it wrong or whatever the case is. And so now your numbers here are not the same as mine. But what the examiners do when we talk about having a policy of marking your errors through, what the examiners do is they say, okay, you're going to lose the marks because you did the wrong thing with that item. So you lose the one mark there. But after you've been penalized for not knowing that thing, we're not going to take marks away from you again. So when it comes to balancing out your ledger, the concept that I'm examining here is do you know how to close off a GL account? Okay, that's what they're examining. That's what the marks here are allocated for. Do you know how to close off a GL account? So what they're going to do then is say, okay, given all the stuff that you've got, given all your numbers, have you closed off your general ledger correctly? And they will then give you the marks if you've calculated correctly. Even though your number is now not the same as the number on the mark plan, they're going, yes, this person took all of their movements, they took all of their debits and all of their credits, and they dealt with it properly. Okay, so they're not going to take marks away because your number is not 103.630. They're going to say, if I calculate now your balance, your account, your general ledger, what should your balance have been? Let me see whether or not you know how to close off your general ledger account. Okay, they're not going to penalize you twice for the same mistake. Okay, you got penalized, you lost the mark here because you didn't put it in. They're not going to penalize you again because your 103.630 is wrong because you left it out. That's not what they're examining. They're examining, do you know how to close off a general ledger account? So the marks allocated to closing off the account, you will still get. Okay, and that is so crucial because all of a sudden it means if something goes wrong somewhere along the way and you get something, you mess something up. Yes, you're going to lose that particular mark, but... It doesn't mean that the rest of your marks are in danger. So when you're now looking at information and you're going, oh, but Yvonne, I don't know what to do with number three. Fine then, leave it and move on. You can still get the marks for, for number four or number five or number six if you leave number three out. I'd rather you realize that time equals marks and go, well, I could spend four minutes on item number three and still not get a mark for it or I can spend you know I can move on to item number four spend two minutes and get two marks that's what I'd rather you you do so understand that there's going to be stuff in there that's higher grade my little HG and when you come across it I don't want you to panic I don't want you to go oh my goodness what have they done oh my goodness I'm gonna fail I don't know what I'm doing oh my, oh my goodness just understand oh wait a minute this is a higher grade issue maybe this is something that I need to move on I need to leave out I need to not do I need to not spend time on the, the most dangerous thing about what you think is that the most dangerous thing about the higher grade stuff is that you're not going to get it right that is not the truth. The most dangerous thing about the higher grade stuff is that you waste time. And the time for the easy stuff, you then run out of. You don't have time to finish the question because you spent all your time on the higher grade issue. So you've got to learn to move on, move on, move on, move on. Let it go. Move on. Okay. Very, very, very important. So 
understanding what they're trying to examine, understanding there's always going to be higher grade stuff in there, understand some of the stuff you're going to get right, some of it you're going to get wrong. Uh, my biggest issue is don't waste time on stuff uh, because you're, you're losing out on the next possible marks that you could possibly be getting. And that is absolutely, 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 absolutely crucial. If it's higher grade, look at it, note it, see it for what it is and make sure that you don't spend too much time on it.